It's another Meepology moment. I'm here with Philip Berger, right? Is that the correct way to do it? I know we have yes. a German pronunciation and I'm, I'm always transparent on that. You said uh, for the Americanization of that uh, Berger work. So uh, Philip Berger with uh, PKB Games, correct? Yes, that's awesome. right. Thanks, right. Bok, for having me. You're very welcome. And uh, thanks for coming on. I'm telling you, I'm really excited about having you on this. The reason why is um, uh, I want to make a, a point. If folks are interested in seeing the full review of this game, which I highly recommend, uh, go to Everything Board Games. That's uh, games with an S, everythingboardgames.com, front slash review. You'll see it down below. And check out the full review that I did uh, uh, on this game. And I think you'll uh, enjoy uh, the detail on it. But what we're doing today is we're really going to be focusing on a very key mechanic of this game, which I, as I said in the review, and I'll say in front of you, congratulations. It is amazing. I think it's actually kind of revolutionary in regards to how war gaming uh, can be played and should be played in regards to uh, the overview of the table. And so I'll uh, get a little more into detail with that as well. Um, but what, let folks know a little bit about yourself first, and then I'll kind of jump in with the, the question and we'll get we we'll going with that as well. A little bit about Trench yeah. Club. Exactly. So thanks uh, thanks again. So presenting Trench Club today. Um, it, it originally started from, from myself and my bo board gaming group. So I'm a, um, I love board gaming as well. I love war games. And um, I just didn't find the one game that perfectly matched our player setup. So mm -hmm. I was playing um, games like Axis and Allies, which came pretty close to that. And um, I just needed something, we just wanted something in, in that area, which is not too complex, like a um, fully blown um, war game with where you just play over days with little counters and get really into 50 pages rule books and have to read history books to actually understand it. Nor did I want it to get too shallow, right? You, you know, just a clash game. So I wanted kind of the perfect um, spot in the middle. And that's why um, where I started like uh, 10 years ago with a couple of my friends and developing uh, one game that would, uh, that we would like. And it got, it turned out to be really complicated and of course didn't work at all in the beginning. And then we iterated over times and times and kept on playing this. And at some point in time, we just saw it didn't really develop further um, from, from one game to the other. So it just felt right and just had fun. And uh, yeah. and that's why when I felt it's 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 like ready. And then I thought about um, publishing this game and making it available to other players. I first uh, released one version of the game, which was called Trench Foot, um, back at that uh, the day with um, as a self publisher with uh, 3D printed miniatures. Just sell, uh, sold hundred. Um, pieces, just produced 100 pieces, sold them in Germany. Uh, I didn't um, actually expect that anyone would be buying these, to be honest. So apart from kind of my my brother, um, just to, uh, <laughs> or a couple of my friends, uh, just uh, so that I'm happy. But actually it was, was um, sold out in, in no time and people really enjoyed it and I got super positive feedback. And so I thought, yeah, maybe there, uh, that's not only me and my, my group of friends, maybe other people would be enjoying that. Um, I collected more feedback from, from players and then, yeah, I um, um, tried it. Uh, I um, started a Kickstarter campaign, improved the game again, and that's how Trench Club was, was awesome. born. Well, and I do want to say, I mean, you're not only the designer, you're the artist, uh, you're the publisher, the creator, I mean, the whole nine yards right across the board on this. Yes, so I got I got professional help um, for that. So for Trench uh, Foot, I did everything myself. Um, yeah. For um, um, Trench Club, here this amazing um, cover image here, yeah. just showing that yeah. here I couldn't do that myself. So I yeah. got a, um, um, a designer, Lionel Schramm, um, who painted uh, painted Wonderful. this picture. So I got help where, oh, where I could. Uh, yeah, to give things. credit there so, for sure. Well, so I did the. I did the little tanks myself. I could I could do those, so I can oh, do nice. um, machinery with three D. That's great too. The, the, do the soldiers, so I had a professional artist for for those as well. Very nice. Well, it's, I said the detail is great um, on it as well. Um, you know, nowadays, like I said, with three uh, D printing, it's amazing. So, but let, what I want to do is let me jump right into the one mechanic which I think. Um, um, really needs to uh, be discussed directly and, and uh, specifically, and that's the combat mechanic. And as I said, if you read the review, you'll see what I'm talking about on this. Um, it, it, when we start looking at uh, different mechanics that are new, not only uh, new to the market or that I think, okay, this is unique and that should be um, identified. That's what we're about to talk about, but also for new gamers and why um, under what we do a lot of is discuss how to bring new gamers to the, into the hobby. And when you do that, you think war gaming and all of a sudden, you know, you go back to the, either the staunchy old Orson Well days of on the floor and these big, big items or just, you know, like a, a Warhammer type of thing where all they're crowded and people don't know they're rolling dice for no reason. People don't know what's going on. Um, 
so to be able to introduce somebody to it and enjoy it, but do it in a way that um, is fun, um, you, you know, roll a ton of dice, but it's designed a very specific way for, for uh, intuitively for people to understand. That's what I think what you did and created uh, comes out and shines well. So uh, let's talk about the mechanic of it. If you have the, the little thing you can show as well is the mechanic is designed around every unit having two specific poles. Right, and those poles you put little pups on, right? As we call them, they're the yep, they're the uh, little. You can see you can put little tubes over the top of them as well to do it. Yep, they're in there, and we'll show you some pictures of it too as we go through it. Um, and the nice thing about this is that um, um, it's really dynamic into how it works. So without me doing, I'll let you discuss it. Can you give me an idea, maybe specifically how that idea came about and how you kind of develop that into the mechanic it is uh, finalized uh, today? Yeah. So um, as, as you just said, every, every unit has um, two, um, two little markers and marked here with poles. And one is the damage the unit can suffer during combat. And the second one is the combat experience uh, that uh, units can, can gain. And um, especially the damage part is something that's very common in computer games, right? So you know the kind of the health bar at the bottom and you kind of that reduces. So that's a common um, scheme because people like it people actually enjoy um, something something like that yeah. and the same is um, similar as with experience um, you can develop your units you can kind of have units get more valuable the more ca combat experience you have so they get they get uh, pressures for you and um, that uh, creates a, almost like an emotional bond to to one of your units right so if you have this fighter aircraft and it's super experienced it um, uh, fought a lot of battles it won you a lot of battles then um, then you really want to keep it it's really, really something that that gains in value so these were two concepts i really wanted to bring to a board game in computer games, of course, it's easy. Kind of, you have the health bar. You can have all kinds of attributes assigned to um, to a unit. Not not so much for board games. So I wanted to to introduce a mechanism um, to to do that and bring that on on the board. Um, I experimented a lot um, with that and with different things that you could do. So there are board games around that do similar things with um, adding little cubes on the board. I think Company of Heroes does that. So you have a little miniature on the sitting on the field and then you put three cubes next to it. But then when you move the unit around, then you have to move the cubes around. It's very yes. fiddly. And also it's not really on the unit, right? So it's kind of next to it. So it doesn't, doesn't give you really the feel. I also experimented with um, 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 little discs on the bottom of the unit that you could turn, kind of yeah. damage markers, and you turn, twist them a little bit, and uh, read a number or something like that. Um, that in play test, that didn't feel that satisfying for for players um, either, because at first it looks very complicated with look at the turning a little wheels uh, yeah. here and there, and also it just it just gives you a satisfying feeling. So when you kind of have an a combat experience and you physically put it on the unit it just it just feels yeah. great or if you yep. give somebody a damage mark it's you put that right onto the unit and that's something that people had a lot of fun with in the in the in the test so that was really kind of the the system that um that prevailed i first did it um in first prototypes when i still had 3d printed uh, miniatures i did it with little wooden discs and toothpicks in there. And I just would <laughs> add uh, little markers on the toothpicks and uh, kind of, yeah, that was the, the best system. And this is what it looks now. So it, um, you have the, uh, just trying to find yeah. the camera here. You have the, the miniature and you have two little poles there and you can um, add the, um, um, yeah, little nice. cylinders on that to, to mark the unit. So a couple of things I've, I can uh, kind of exp expand on that too, is that what I found to be very interesting as we played it and so forth as well, is first of all, I, you know, it was less likely, me, less likely for me to forget to roll an extra die or take that XP, you know, whatever it was that at that moment, because it's like, oh, I didn't do that two times ago, right? And I could have, I could have, uh, you know, added that extra roll, an extra hit, an extra crit or whatever on it. When you stare at it, you automatically see what you have going on at that moment with that piece, which I think is very, very important, not only for gaming in general with a mass number of units, but also for new gamers, right? To be able to kind of take one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, to be able to do that. Um, but the, the key thing for an experienced gamer that I think really stands out, I don't know if you've noticed this and I'm sure you have, but um, as you look at the game board, it kind of dictates how the war is going right for somebody and what i find that to be really valuable in war gaming specifically is that in real life you know there would be a moment where you're looking okay we're not doing this we need to retreat 
right? Well, in wargaming, it's really hard to tell that point until you get to a point where there's like two units left. And you're like, yeah, this isn't going to work. But literally, you could play a game where you could have a number of units on the board and realize this is not going well. Let's end it, concede, and you win the game. That's something that's hard to do in the in the in the gaming world like that, right? Because it's either on their on their sheets, you know what I mean, or it's you know all over the place. And it's not, but you can actually see the development on the game board. And to me, I think that is a very uh, important piece that is often missed by some of your major game uh, publishers and some of the most popular games out there. What 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 say you? Absolutely. So what you were just referring to is um, um, the damage, and that's indicated by gray uh, little cylinders that you put on the um, on the units, and you can really see that. So if you still have kind of five uh, units on the front line, five miniatures, that might look impressive um, at the first uh, at the first glance, but then you see this big pile of gray damage markers, and you see they actually all kind of ruined. And as you said, it's time for retreat, and you can really see that visually on the game board. Correct. Same with experience. Yes. You have a super okay. strong artillery emplacement with a lot of combat experience that you know it will hit really precisely and really really strong it has zero damage yet then you know you won't just won't get through to that with your damaged unit so as you said um, you might want to retreat um, get back in your forts to repair units or simply just uh, give up because you see okay you don't have a, a chance anymore yeah. which is good as well because um, we probably know that from war games where at some certain point in time the game has tipped and one player doesn't have a chance to, exactly. uh, to win anymore. That yes. player doesn't have fun anymore, doesn't enjoy the game anymore. But the has other to party stick with it, wants, right? Be yes, yeah, exactly. The other party still wants so, to continue because obviously they have fun, they are winning. At this point, right. it's just better to say, okay, yeah, make a cut, I give up. Right, exactly. Um, so that's that's the most um, important and impressive part of that too, because there is that exhaustion level, right, that we deal with um, when we game to a point where it's like, well, now I'm just playing along the way, where you literally can go, you have this, you have this, and it's over because of that. And of course, combat, obviously, even horror game is the main mechanics. So there's a lot of other games that are out there that do different type of mechanics that help uh, identify things or maybe, you know, make the 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 units themselves be unique, um, which I know you have an expansion, which I highly recommend on it too, for other reasons of the game. But um, for that one specifically, that's the, the cool piece I think really stood out. And I really do think, uh, you know, there's some royalties involved in that. You should be talking to some folks um, about taking advantage of that idea and really developing it further um, into the games, because I think it does add that value to um, the overall gaming experience. So awesome. How do uh, folks, if they're interested, as again, we can talk it up all day, but if they want to get a hold of the game, um, be a part of the community and that type of thing, uh, let, let the folks know how to do that. Yeah, so it's available on Amazon. So that's probably the easiest way. Um, the game is available on Amazon in, in the US, amazon.com. And in Europe, Amazon, DE.ES.IT, France, Italy, Spain, um, wherever you, you are. Um, and it's available on my website. So you can also directly um, order it through the pkbgames.com um, website. Awesome. All right, Bill, we appreciate it very much for you taking the time uh, to come on and uh, speak to us. I said, it'd be pithy and to the point and really kind of focused on that. I recommend every folks to check out again, the full review at everythingboardgames.com front slash review. There's a lot of other great reviews on games as well, but look for uh, Trench Club uh, and check it out and make sure uh, you support uh, Mr. Philip and uh, his endeavors. And I'm sure we'll see a lot more. I'm looking forward to the expansions, different countries and a lot of things down the line. So thanks so much. I'm for already thinking about some. Thanks go. a lot. Paul. You're welcome. Take care.